Hello again. It's been quite a while since since I did one of these come walk with me recordings as I walk. Uh, I have been walking, but it's to say that the last two months has been quite stressful is putting it mildly. Uh, now, well, today is November, hmm, 7th, 8th, it's also confusing. 6, 7, 8, okay, November the 8th. Ooh, a deer almost got hit by a car. Hang on, ooh. The driver just went by pretty shaken up by that close call with the deer. Another car was coming, so it was phew, not a good, not a good sight. Okay, uh, anyway, now that the election for the United States president is over, and the very, very sad and disappointing results are that Trump will once again be a president, which is completely outrageous, horrible, and frightening. The anxiety of not knowing what was going to happen is past, and now it's just a matter of dealing with it. What I realized very quickly and was preparing for was the fact that we kind of went through this before when Trump became president in 2016. And what happened then was that so many of us who were not happy about that, we shut down for a while because, well, it brought to our attention the fact that we'd become many, and I'm saying we because I talked to so many people back then about what happened after that. Um, we had become complacent. You know, we were the flower children. We grew up, we were born in the early 50s. We grew up in the 60s. Uh, well, 50s, 60s, 70s. Time of peace and love. And we kind of thought that we had changed the world a bit and that it would maintain kind of on its own. And it didn't. It didn't at all because some people still got, well, not still, but as they grew up into their 30s, 40s, 50s, shit happens. And life beats us up quite a bit. Some turn to to leaving creativity behind and, you know, being responsible to support families, to, to do some really wonderful things. Uh, others left creativity behind and and they chose power and money and control. I mean, I, I was astounded at the size of houses. Each few years, like every five years, the normal house, the average house being built, was bigger and bigger and bigger. People had fewer children. There were just um, some of these mega mansions they were being built around me. Only had two people living in them and hardly living in them. They would commute into New York City and they had these huge houses and huge properties that they couldn't take care of. So of course they hired landscapers and you know, on and on and on and on. So what happened when Trump became elected in 2016 is that it kind of cracked our heads open now, I had not given up creativity, but I'd also not continued to be responsible in more than a private way um, to monitor what was going on in the world. Um, I certainly 
continued to take care of Mother Earth in the best way I could, and I would participate in some activities and events that, that were convenient for me. Uh, but I saw so much shutting down and so many creative people becoming paralyzed by what happened and so depressed, people leaving the United States and, you know, where was our fight back attitude that we had when we were flower children in the 60s? Um, it was there, but it was not within my scope. And I felt lost and even more detached than I'd been in just fighting to keep my children fed while I continued to be creative. So I'm not going to let that happen this time. And thanks to the internet, there is a way to be connected worldwide. You know, we know what's going on. I had so many of my friends and artists from overseas in contact with me and watching the election and um, just, I felt very supported. I felt very supported, not, not just by my few neighbors that keep me balanced and, and my soul nurtured, but I felt nurtured by, by artists around the world. And that was fantastic. And I thank all of you so, so much. Um, so I'm, I'm going to step up the challenge to myself to be even more consistent with, with the idea behind why we're creative, why it's so important for us to nurture nurture what we do, what we think, what we feel, and to be in touch with all those feelings and to express them and to be examples, not to spout things off because we're so sick of that and we, and we don't really know what's true or not true. I mean, that's the downside of the internet. But through our actions, through our mark making, we're pretty powerful. And you don't have to be a, a professional artist or an artist that shows and exhibits all over or makes a lot of money or whatever it is that, that people think you have to do to call themselves an artist. No, no, we are all artists. And if we sit and play connect the dots with, with our friends, with our grandchildren, we are being creative. I'm about to lose my camera. Okay, I was just getting too passionate there. Uh, and the reason I bring up mark making is because uh, just this past Monday, our art book club sketchbook story time session was spent in a live activity of mark making. Here comes another car. And it, it was an exercise that I was given back when I was in art school. And I have presented in some of my workshops and people rarely did it. So I decided to do it live so that we would all be doing it together. Um, and Oh, so glad I did. I could not look at my marks and analyze them until last night and then this morning just because uh, of the stress. I mean, I really, I couldn't identify with my feelings. I couldn't, uh, I was stressed out about the election, about my eye surgery, about hand surgery, you know, so many, so many things that were going on. My home situation, which is dreadful. And, and then when I took the time, settled myself down and went down to look at all the single marks I had made on the hundred pieces of paper, I was amazed. I was amazed at, 
at the responses that I had that were so different from previous times that I'd done this experiment. And at the same time that I was looking at them, it was like reading a history book of my own life. I could see the marks that at one time I identified strongly with, but I didn't anymore. And the marks that I ended up with, I kept narrowing it down and narrowing it down and narrowing it down. And it was almost like going through a box of stuff that, that I needed to sort to simplify my life. And I'd pick up something and, and I was so attached to the story and what it had meant to me in the past that I couldn't throw it away. So I'd put it back in the things to keep pile. And I felt like that with the marks. And I, um, <laughs> it was kind of, kind of painful at times, but then I found myself looking back at the mass of the hundred pages of marks and finding myself attracted to certain ones and thinking, wow, you know, if, if I if I stay attached to my old marks, there's not going to be room in my life, in my creative practice, for the new marks that, that are calling out to me. So, so, okay, I will say thank you very much to those marks of my history mark making. And maybe my signature is becoming a little bit different. Maybe stepping into into being a crone um, and having that responsibility to pass the wisdom and knowledge and passion on to, to those around me in a wiser way, I can let go of those previous marks. Yeah, that's who I was then. And I'm not that person anymore. I'm, I'm part of that person or that person's part of me, but I'm something else that still needs to be discovered. And so the marks that I ended up with, I would have never imagined. And yet when I think back to Monday when I was making those marks, those were the marks that, that felt wonderful. And they surprised me as I was making them. And I'd make it and put it aside and think, oh, I'm gonna have to think about that later. And the marks that I even tried to make the marks that I knew I identified with before, and they just, they came out like those sixes that I, that I mentioned when I was talking about it with, um, with those of us who gathered on Monday. And, and they just, they didn't work anymore. A lot more linear, uh, linear movement is coming in to that circular movement. The circ I couldn't make a circle. I couldn't. And I mean, I still work with circles all the time, but in that stroke, that single stroke, my hand didn't want to do it. My soul didn't want to do it. Before it would meet up again with where I'd started, it would veer off to the left and make a really awkward, ugly looking six. There was one, one circle that I ended up keeping, not to the very end of my eliminating, but pretty close to it. And it was surprising because it was done in pencil and not with a brush. And it was a combination of these kind of L-like lines and a circle. So I have a lot to think about in terms of where this new mark will lead me. I'm very excited about doing the next stage, which is two marks, and then three marks, and then four marks, and then five marks. So, uh, hmm, not sure what to say about any of it. Uh, the other thing that is on my mind, and which booted me out here to 
walk because I will be walking with my neighbor in about an hour, so I'll be doing the walk twice. But I really needed to get out and 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 do this rambling on um, for my own documentation, actually, but also to share, especially with Suzanne, because I know that she looks forward to these and she does listen to them. So even if Suzanne is the only one who ever hears this, I'm doing this for you, Suzanne, too, for you and for me. Um, and I thank you so much for your contribution to our community. It, it's, it's really kept me going in times that have been struggling, as you know, this year has been. Um, so the other thing I want to say, and then I'm going to turn off the camera and just enjoy the rest of the walk, is that um, due to some study groups that are being led, uh, well, they take place in, uh, in the UK, and as a result, I have to get up at 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning in order to watch the live to be part of the live study group which you know you don't join a study group to watch the recording um, because you you need to participate and because of my schedule it meant that I was going to sleep at about 12 30 at night or later than that with the election and then getting up at 3 30 to prepare for the study group and to be there when it started. So I didn't get very much sleep for two days. So last night, I fell asleep very early um, and slept through, so slept an enormously long amount of time and went into REM um, and deep sleep, which was good for me. And I, early this morning, while I was asleep, I had one last dream that it was ah, very, um, unsettling and I was trying to keep it in my thoughts so that I could learn something from it and I thought oh the last thing I need is a dream that makes me feel even worse about life than I'm already feeling right now and as I processed that, not really thinking or trying to understand what it was about, just feeling that feeling and kind of wanting to squeeze out of it everything I could so that it could be gone and leave me alone, <clears throat> something, something alchemized. It, it changed a little bit and I am now in just the most spectacular mood. I went down and I started to sort through things that are still all discombobulated from the flood back in January because of everything that's happened since then. And I found myself feeling better and better and better and excited and, you know, finding, finding like a chunk of art graph that I hadn't used in a while and being so excited about using it and thinking of Oh my, you know, we, we definitely need to do a lot more of these live events together. You know, together online. We don't, we're not talking or anything. We're just kind of doing it, but we're, we're allowing ourselves that time to see what happens. And I think that my little what if that I used to always present in classes, I think it's changed. I just now thought about this to see what happens. Now it's so simple, you hear this all the time, but do we really do it? And by meeting together, it, it felt so good on Monday to be supporting one another during our personal time there, making marks. And we also had committed to doing it. And it's so easy. You can say, oh yeah, I'm going to do that this afternoon. And then you put it off and maybe you do a few and take some photos and post it and stuff. But to commit to doing it together is great. And I love that about live workshops. But we don't have 
live workshops the way we used to. COVID changed a lot of that. And, and what it did, it made it easier for people to attend workshops who are older, who don't drive at night, who don't have the money to travel and stay in hotels during a workshop. So it's really opened up great, great possibilities. And so I'm embracing that and embracing it even more, not, not to expand the community to being huge at all, but what I've, what I've discovered from these study groups is that we can still have an intimate meeting, you know, a trusting meeting where we're seeing each other. Nine, nine of us fit rather nicely on a monitor. So it could be that that will be the limit, you know, because I want that. Uh, we had, I think, 10, and so that meant one person wasn't on the monitor screen. And, and when she would talk, um, of course, we would all listen, but, but it wasn't the same as watching her expression. Um, so I'm hoping that I think nine will be a good place to stop for, for either the art book club or I don't know, I haven't figured that out. But I like that where we can actually see each other. If people don't want to put the video camera on, that's fine too. It was still fine when somebody just had their name there and talking. It still felt like they were present in the room. Um, so I'm, I've just got to figure all this out. But the fact that Trump won the election has really pushed me into gear to say, whoa, you know, I have a lot to offer and I have a lot to, to give. I have enough energy and caring and passion to hopefully inspire and support those who may need a little nudge to feel good about the day when they wake up in the morning in spite of what's going on all over the world in such horrible, tragic ways, and in spite of what is being done to our wonderful Mother Earth, we can't give up the fight. We cannot, but we can be gentle. We can be more powerful in our gentle ways, in spending time with young children who are going to grow and be the adults and the caretakers of of the earth, of the cosmos, and they'll succeed or they'll fail. But we have to give them all that we can to nurture their spirit, their heart, their creative energy so that they might make good decisions, not selfish decisions, not decisions based on power and control and telling people what to do and getting rid of people that don't agree with with what we believe in. So that's, that's my job as a crone. It's my job as a mother. I'm not a grandmother yet, hope to be. And that's my job just as a human being, as a woman as all those things, as a friend, as a teacher, as a student, you name it, you know, it's my responsibility to be honest and true and to keep my energy flowing so that I have an abundance that I can share with others. So, thank you. If you've watched this, if you've watched this all the way to the end, Thank you, and I hope you too will awaken in the mornings and be excited about, about at least one thing that you're going to do in that glorious day when the sun has risen again. And then when the moon comes up, you take time to stare at the moon and the stars and realize that we are part of such an amazing phenomena of life. So have a great day. I love you all.
Bye-bye.